data. So uh, from the community, uh, since I joined the open metadata community, one of the most uh, frequent requests, if not the most uh, frequent requests that we get um, from these support questions that you're seeing here has been, when will open metadata support Airflow 3? And I'm happy to say that that is coming uh, very soon. So to get uh, before that, to get a, you a brief introduction of what you can do with Airflow 3, we wanted to bring in uh, astronomers Kenton Danis, and she'll be able to tell us what to expect from Airflow 3. So thanks, uh, Kenton. Please take it away. Yeah, thanks so much, Nick. Uh, I will go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, great. Um, so as Nick said, I'm going to go through kind of a whirlwind introduction to Apache Airflow 3. Uh, for anybody here who might not be familiar, um, Airflow is the open source standard for workflow management or data orchestration. It sounds like it's a very heavily requested topic here in the open metadata community. So I'm going to assume a lot of you have at least some familiarity. Um, but Airflow is, of course, a really, really widely used and popular Apache Software Foundation project for uh, writing, running, and monitoring data workflows. Um, it, uh, similar to the stats you just saw for open metadata, has been growing quite a lot recently. Um, it's a huge project now. It has over 60,000 people in the Slack, um, over 40 million downloads, and has recently passed 3,000 contributors. So we at Astronomer are really excited with where the project is at right now. Um, for those not familiar with Astronomer, uh, we are one of the maintainers of the open source Airflow project. Uh, we also have our uh, data orchestration platform, Astro, which is the service, um, the paid service that we provide to our customers that is built on top of Airflow. So um, that's not the focus of my talk today, but always happy to answer any questions there. Um, and of course, this was a really big year for the Airflow project. So in terms of milestones, just a little bit of history here. Airflow was originally created way back in 2014. Um, uh, the 1.0 release uh, came out shortly after that. Um, in 2019, it was adopted by the Apache Software Foundation and made a top level project. So that's when it started really picking up steam. Um, and of course, the 2.0 release came out uh, towards the end of 2020 that made it more enterprise production ready. Um, in the intermediate years between then, um, there were minor releases 2.1 through 2.10. Uh, while not major, so no breaking changes, they brought a ton of new features, um, including especially around things like efficiency and ease of use, as well as data awareness. Um, so that's what we have been focused on in the project for the last couple of years. But then in April of this year, we made another huge jump forward uh, with the 3.0 release. Um, so again, this is 2024 because development, of course, started last year, but it was released in April of this year um, and brought uh, a couple of big new themes with lots of new features within those. So I'm going to talk through those really quickly in today's presentation. Um, and then the project has not stopped since then. So actually 3.1 was released in October. Um, and this brought even more new features kind of building off of that really foundational 3.0 release. Um, so the project is moving forward really quickly. Again, 3.0 was the biggest release in this long history uh, with a lot of use. And of course, the first major release in four, four and a half-ish years, something like that. Um, so we're really excited by everything that's in it and the adoption that we've seen so far. And I do want to highlight before I get into some of the new features that the Airflow survey, which uh, is actually open right now for this year, it closes tomorrow. So if anybody here is an Airflow user and wants to fill out the survey, you have one day left to do so. Um, but the development that I'm going to talk about uh, throughout this presentation uh, for the features that came in Airflow 3 and 3.1 and even all of the preceding minor releases mostly came from the results of the Airflow survey. So this project is very, very community driven. Um, of course, Astronomer, as well as companies like Amazon and Google are doing a lot of the development, but it is fully open source. And again, we take you know, the community input into account for everything that we develop. So DAG versioning, which is something I'll talk about, was always number one on the wish list in Airflow surveys, was added in Airflow 3. Um, a lot of other things that I'm going to talk about were as well. So um, even though it has grown, Airflow has remained very community driven. 
Um, and with that, again, I'll go through very quickly some of the big themes in Airflow 3. Um, those are ease of use, uh, stronger security, the ability to run tasks anywhere at any time, and then more support for AI-driven workflows. Um, I'll disclaimer here that everything that I'm covering is not going to be comprehensive for what is in these releases. I'm happy to link to the release notes, um, and I've got some other follow-on resources at the end here. So we don't have enough time to cover anything, but we'll talk about the bigger things. Uh, starting with ease of use features, um, again, the user experience is always really top of mind because Airflow is so widely used in so many different industries and for so many different use cases. Of course, everybody wants it to be really easy to use. Um, Airflow 3 had a couple of really big updates here. Uh, those were DAG versioning, which I already mentioned, which allows you to view historical versions of your DAGs and all of their run information. So as your pipelines change structure over time, you can still maintain that history there. Uh, the UI was completely rewritten. So if you are an Airflow 2 user, uh, you might have the adjustment there of moving to Airflow 3, but the UI is now, in my opinion, a lot easier to use. It is now fully React based. There's a new plugins interface. Uh, so that has been a really cool update that we've been excited for for a long time. Um, and then the final update here was backfills at scale. So backfills are something that almost everybody who works with data pipelines has to do at some point. Uh, they existed in Airflow 2, but were pretty hacky. Um, and they're now a first class supported feature that you can do easily from the UI API or CLI. Uh, I won't go into all of these in depth, but just to give you a little bit of a sense of what this looks like, I have a nice GIF here of uh, switching between different versions in a DAG. So Prior to this in Airflow 2, if you made changes to your DAG or your pipeline code, uh, as far as Airflow was concerned, the most recent version of the code is the only thing that has ever existed. So any prior history was completely lost. Uh, this obviously made it a challenge for auditability, um, even things like managing PII and stuff like that um, for more sensitive industries, but or just your day-to-day -day trying to figure out what was going on with a previous run of your DAG. Um, so again, part of why it was the most requested community feature, um, and it's now set up totally out of the box. So you actually don't need to do anything uh, to set this up for the most basic version. And you can see here as we're flipping through different ones, uh, you can see how the graph has changed over time. Uh, Airflow UI, um, not the easiest thing to show in slides, so definitely recommend that folks just check it out. Um, but it is, it is a totally redesigned. This is the new color scheme that was introduced in Airflow 3.1, um, which is, uh, it looks a lot nicer, but is also more accessible. Dark mode is fully supported. Uh, and again, the UI is a lot easier to navigate now. So um, exciting update there. Uh, this also came with a new plugins interface. So if this is something that you're doing to customize Airflow, uh, you have a lot more functionality here. Uh, Astronomer's DevRel team has been really big this season into playing video games in Airflow. So this is the gift of a simple one here. Um, of course, this is probably not what you're doing in real life, but it is a fun example showing how you can uh, implement things like React apps uh, and stuff like that pretty easily. Okay, uh, so flying through these, uh, the next theme was stronger security. Again, I'll just touch on this really briefly. Um, this is more of an in the weeds topic, so it's not something you're likely to interact with as an Airflow user. Um, but Airflow 3 is a new major version, did have some very substantial architectural changes under the hood. Um, the biggest one was for task isolation. So the way that tasks communicate uh, from the worker to the metadata database has totally changed within Airflow three. This has made it a lot more secure. Um, again, hopefully you don't really have to care about this change as the end user. If you did have tasks in a pipeline that were actually reading directly from the metadata database, that is one breaking change that you can no longer do. Um, that's not possible anymore. Uh, but again, this was mostly a security related change and then also laid the foundation for a couple of other things that I'm going to cover in the next session section. Um, we have lots more information about stuff like this, including uh, the nitty gritty details of exactly what changed here, if that's something you're interested in. But in the interest of time, uh, I'll go ahead and move on. Uh, to the next theme, which again was heavily enabled by this architectural change that I just mentioned, and that's this ability to run tasks uh, anywhere at any time. The anywhere piece, 
uh, comes from what we call remote execution or edge execution, uh, which is a huge new feature in Airflow 3 that allows you to run tasks on workers in remote clusters. So if you're running Airflow, say on Kubernetes, either yourself or as part of a managed service like Astronomers or um, Amazon's or Google's, uh, you no longer have to run all of your tasks in that same Kubernetes cluster. You can run them on an on-prem server. You can run them in a different cluster. You can do all of the above. Uh, at the Airflow Summit, someone ran them on a toaster, I think, or a coffee maker or something wacky. Um, so you can get really fancy with it if you want. Um, but again, this gives you a ton more deployment flexibility. Uh, a lot higher resilience and scalability, and of course, improved security isolation. Uh, this is really big if you work in an industry, again, with highly regulated data, where your data needs to stay in a specific place or um, needs to be isolated in a way that people can't access it. So that's where we've seen this most used so far. This is actually one of the most adopted features in Airflow 3 um, that we've seen with our customers, again, just because of the flexibility. So uh, it's also... Um, relatively easy to set up from the airflow side, lots of infrastructure stuff going on behind the scenes, but we've got some um, resources for how you might set this up if that's of interest. Uh, and then the last thing I'll go through is more support for AI workflow. So this was a foundation that was built on in Airflow 3, and then a lot of new functionality was actually added in 3.1, which again just came out in October. Uh, a little bit on why you would want this. Um, AI, of course, really widely used. We hope it's being used efficiently to uh, make things easier for you and your teams. Uh, but it is not uh, at the point where it can be used without human intervention uh, at some point. So this was a, a fun example of where um, AI policy had gone awry. Uh, this is the type of thing we want to avoid, especially in your data pipelines. So Two of the new features uh, released in Airflow 3.1. Um, the biggest one is human in the loop. Uh, so in the previous example, what you would actually want before your chatbot makes up a policy that you then have to honor uh, is for a human to go in and review those results and say, hey, I approve this, let's move forward, or no, let's make a change again before something is shipped. So the idea here with human in the loop is that within your DAG run, um, you can insert this new operator. Um, your ta that task will then pause and wait for the human input. Uh, it will use the deferrable mode. So if you're familiar with that from Airflow 2, um, it won't take a worker slot, super efficient um, and cost effective. You can then, as the person, uh, submit whatever it is that you need, either via the U UI or API. Um, and then once that is done, the task will then resume with human input. Uh, again, we're using AI as the example here. I have also seen um, folks do this who come from like Control M workflows or some other legacy orchestrator that had functionality like this. So it's certainly not only AI that is relevant here. It's just one example of where we've seen a lot of need for this human in the loop. Uh, so with that, there are four new operators here. Um, I'm just going to click through these. Uh, the most basic one is the human in the loop operator. So this is, uh, again, kind of the base option here where you can provide uh, multiple parameters and then the default. And then as the user, you would go in and say, I'm going to pick the option that I want. There are also a couple of uh, specialized ones that are relatively self-explanatory based on their name. So approval, you get to say yes or no. Um, entry operator, you can give input into like a text box. Um, and branching operator is where you would choose, you know, two different um, or maybe more than two between options of where your workflow should go. And that might be based on previous results. Uh, so super easy to implement. They're just like any other Airflow operator. Um, and again, they're all deferred. So uh, pretty cool functionality. Definitely recommend folks check that out. And then the last feature I'll cover here is um, synchronous DAG execution. So this is the idea of if you were going to use Airflow for the back end of an application where you wanted to have a user like submit input, say through a web interface or something like that, and then have a DAG run on the back end and then send its results. Um, again, also very relevant in AI applications, but not necessarily only AI. Uh, so this is pretty simple feature. It's um, just a new API endpoint that uh, will actually wait until the DAG run completes. So instead of immediately returning a response of yes, the DAG is done or no, it's not, if it's not done, it will just sit there and wait until it is. 
um, when the run completes, it will send back the results. Uh, so super easy to implement. Again, very helpful for um, building external services that react to DAG completion in some way, whether that be like an LLM inference, um, some sort of front end for a multi-agent orchestration. It could also be for ad hoc analysis where, um, again, the DAG is what's happening on the back end, uh, but you have a user who is triggering that um, in an ad hoc manner. So, uh, okay. That was a pretty whirlwind tour, again, of the biggest things in Airflow 3. This is uh, by no means a comprehensive list. I will, in a minute, um, throw a link to the release notes in the chat, which is a great way to get started. We also have a free book, and there's an ebook version of this that uh, covers all of the features that I just talked about in a lot of depth. So if you're interested in reading more, I recommend that as a good resource to check out. Okay, and I think that's it for me. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks for sharing. Um, I think it was great for us to see as open metadata is, um, you know, most popular orchestrator or use a lot of people are using Airflow to bring in new metadata um, as that changes in their systems. And as metadata lovers here in this meetup group, it's great to hear that DAG versioning, I think, is going to be super useful for all of us. So great to see that in and also really excited to see the community, open metadata communities of uh, creativity and what you mentioned that remote execution, edge execution, where people start hosting um, their ingestion jobs, I think um, could change very soon. So looking forward to that. Uh, if you have any questions about Astronomer or Airflow 3 or anything else, uh, please let us know. Um, but we can keep going here. Uh, wanted to